John Valanthan is a quiet man who's shunned worldwide attention and requests for interviews, but he has spoken to us. I began by asking him about the moment he got the call for an international mission. I was in Aztec West working uh, at about 3 p.m. when I had a call that said I was booked on a nine o'clock flight to Thailand. So did you have any idea of what you might be facing? The answer is expect the unexpected. Just talk us through the moment because we've seen a bit of it on video of when you appeared to surface and you appeared to have found them. It's been mentioned by some members of the press that it, it was luck. Um, I, I would say that was absolutely not, not the case. Our, our procedure is, in this situation, we're swimming along an underwater passage. Wherever there is airspace, we surface, we shout, uh, and also we smell. Um, and in this case, we smelt the children before we actually saw or heard them. How, how many of you? Thirteen? Brilliant. But what sort of chances did you give this operation of success? Well, given the volume of water we'd seen come out of that cave in, in the last, in the preceding couple of days, it was unbelievable that, that, that we'd found them and that they were all healthy. And I think we, we were both, both Rick and I were aware of the enormity of the task. What sort of problems were you, were you facing? The visibility in the water is very, very low, so varying d down to a, a, a few inches. Uh, there was also a lot of debris in, in the cave from previous attempts, wire, electrical cable, pumps, tubing, all, all sorts of things. Uh, the cold also was an issue. Some of the children were quite small, so we were quite concerned about the, the, how well the, the smaller children would, would hold up in terms of the, the, the journey out through the water. What struck me about that photo is that some of the kids were smiling. It was a big smile. At that point, they were quite pleased, and we spent a fair bit of time up there really trying to boost their morale before we left because we didn't have any food to give them, we had lights to give them. And when you had to leave them to go and make your plans and so on, how confident were you of seeing them alive again? I made them a promise that I'd come back and, and we did in fact, we came back with food runs, so completely confident. But having said that, alive in a cave and alive outside of a cave are, are two very different things. Looking at the pictures and that famous pinch point, that very narrow bit, I mean that absolutely sent a shiver down my spine thinking of squeezing through that. Most of the diagrams that have been put out on, on, on the media are, are not correct. Um, there were a, a number of, there were a, a number of, of, of different points where different techniques were required to navigate both a, one person or one person uh, carrying a child. So sometimes if it was very low, you had to carry them to the side. Sometimes if it was very narrow, you would push them in front. What did you do? Just put them under your arm? Or did you swim with them? How did you get them out? We were fortunate enough to have uh, some local Thai boys from a swimming club, uh, which we took to a swimming pool, and we, we practiced beforehand. We essentially strapped a cylinder to the front of the child. Uh, they had a, a full face mask, which is a, a way of making sure that they, they can breathe. Uh, and essentially, they, we had a handle on, on, the, on the back of the child, so you always need to transport someone face down so that any water runs away from their face. And we were able to manu manoeuvre them I in that way, although they were still clipped to us, so that if we lost them in the visibility, we, we would always be able to find them immediately. So you pushed them through almost like a wheelbarrow, was it? If you want a picture, it was probably more like a shopping bag um, that sometimes you would hold close to your chest if the passage was narrow and, and deep. If the passage was low and wide, uh, you would hold them out to the side essentially manoeuvre them round whatever obstacles were in the way. You're not a panicker, are you? I, I'm not a panicker, no. What, what, what gave you that idea? <laughs> you're, so, you're so calm, it's unbelievable. Although, of course, there had been that awful moment when the, the Navy SEAL who went down, his, his life was lost. Well, I'd like to extend my condolences to Saman's family and, and his relatives again. It's a shame because with the rescue being so successful, that kind of adds a, a bittersweet flavour, um, yes, it was a tragedy. But people were genuinely concerned. It wasn't just the media. I mean, there were people who were willing those kids and you to get, get out. We ignore the media. I, I, don't, I don't, don't quite I know can tell I you the say. world was there, you know, sort of willing you on. Um, but you're back now. But then you went back to work immediately. Yep. Work yesterday. No, no rest for the wicked. And <laughs> I've seen some pictures uh, of you um, back at Cubs. You're a leader there? That's right, yes, at Long Ashton. Yeah. 
Uh, and what sort of reception did the uh, children give you? I think they were they were very pleased to see me last night. It was uh, it was nice to see nice to see them, and they, it was great to be back. Can you see that what you did uh, was fairly remarkable? I can see it was a first. How's that? John, we're all pleased. Thank you so much. Great pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Well, I've interviewed prime ministers and stars of stage and screen, but I can tell you he's right there at the, one of the top people I've ever met. Yeah, as it was guy. quite moving, mm. actually, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, but he's completely calm about it. Yeah, he's so it, calm. You know. Yeah, you want him there, don't you? You when do. Something's if you're in happening. trouble, you want John there. Incredible. Well mm. done. That was a really lovely interview. Very eloquent man. Well, you're watching BBC Points West on Friday the 13th, but we are lucky to have you with us.